Welcome back to The Gumby Show, where we tell it like it is, and we don't care how you feel. And here we are, sitting on this fine, beautiful Sunday, for the most part. Pretty lousy weather, actually. Um, after another great weekend in the books of college football, and after another Georgia win. And boy, was this an ass-whooping. Uh, Georgia beats Ole Piss 52-17. to uh, They dominated this game um, through all phases. Uh Offense looked dynamite. Defense, especially after giving out those first two touchdowns, I mean, they, they, Ole Miss couldn't get anything going. Um, special teams punted. I mean, everything was dominant. This was a true ass whooping given to Ole Miss by the Georgia Bulldogs, baby. And they clinched the SEC East. They are going to be playing Alabama um, in Atlanta for the SEC championship game. After Alabama's win last night against Kentucky, they they locked up the West. So that's going to be a fun game. Can't wait for that to get here. But let's get into this uh, ass whooping that Ole Miss took uh, last night. Um, like I said, top to bottom, offense was lethal, deadly tonight or last night for the, um, for the dogs. Uh, Carson Beck, 72 completion percentage um, rating for him on the night. He was, uh, I think, 18 of 22, I believe. Someone, uh, 306 yards, uh, two touchdowns and one interception. Now, that one interception wasn't really his fault. It was delivered right in the hands of the receiver. I mean, it was maybe a little bit behind, kind of like a behind, um, through behind the receiver, but it was right there in the receiver's hands. Bounced off the receiver's hands up in the air and landed right in um, the Ole Miss defender's hands. I mean, so it's like, yeah, he got an interception, but I wouldn't really put that one on uh, Carson Beck. But he was averaging 12.2 yards a completion. Um, that's insane. This Georgia team ran 60 plays. They averaged 10 yards a play. They were basically getting first time first downs every single time they snapped the ball. That is insane. They were deadly on offense tonight. They had 300 rushing yards and 306 passing yards for a total of 606 total offensive yards in the game. Carson Beck had almost more passing yards on this game than Ole Miss did on their total offensive yards gained. Ole Miss total offensive yards gain was 352. Carson Beck's passing was 306. That is insane. <laughs> um, speaking of Ole Miss, um, Jackson Dart, uh, he was 10 of 17, sitting at a 58.8 completion percentage. He had 112 yards. He had zero touchdown passes with one interception. That was a true interception. That was well underthrown. Um, Javon Bullard was the one that intercepted it. Um, he was averaging 6.6 .6 yards a, a, a throw. He did get injured, um, and their backup quarterback, Spencer Sanders, came in to um, kind of finish off the game. At that point, the game was already over. It was a blowout at that point. Um, hope that Jackson Dart um, can recover quickly. He got hit pretty hard. Um, appears to be a shoulder injury. He was taken into the locker room. As of right now, I don't know if there's been an update on him yet, um, but hopefully the guy the guy can get back because he is a good quarterback. He just met a, a brick wall last night. Um, <clears throat> and I called it. I called it uh, in my preview. Oh, real quick, uh, Quayshawn Judkins, that running back for him, he had uh, 22... 22 carries for 75 yards. He averaged 3.4 uh, run yards a uh, carry. Their entire team averaged like four yards a carry on on the run game. They couldn't get anything. They could not run the ball. Um, Georgia defense shut that run game down, um, and they basically took they took everything out of, out of those first two touchdowns. Out of those first two touchdowns, Ole Miss could not get anything going on offense. Um, it felt like for the first quarter, this may have the potential to be a shootout, but no, once Georgia settled down on defense, really after that, um, interception, it was downhill, um, for Ole Miss after that. Um, but I called it, I called it in my, I said it in my, um, preview and prediction for this video that if Ole Miss was going to have any chance at, the, at this game, they're going to have to, one, be less penalized because they are coming into this game as one of the most penalized teams in the country. You can't come in here and play against Georgia and shoot yourself in the foot. Um, and they are going to have to throw haymakers. They are going to have to connect on the deep ball. Oh, they're going to have to connect on 20 
plus yard plays. They were coming into this game at what 60 or 65 yards for more than or plays for more than 20 yards. They were average that's like basically averaging just a little over seven of those a game. That's what Ole Miss was going to have to do. Uh, they did not do that. They had four plays that went for more than 20 yards. Four plays only. That's just not going to get it done. Um, and I call, I said it in in my video that if, if Ole Miss wanted a shot to win this game, they're going to have to connect on the deep ball. They're going to have to throw haymakers. They're going to have to be explosive. And they just weren't. They looked really good on those first two. Um, it was like their first three drives. Um, yeah, their first three drives um, when they scored the two touchdowns. But after that, they couldn't get anything going. I mean, it was it was ugly. Uh, obviously, Brock Bowers was back. Love to see it. He, that guy is is not human. He is a freak athlete. I think he beats the record for the quickest time back after this tightrope surgery. Um, 26 days. That is insane. He even got himself a touchdown. You know, he was three for 34 with one touchdown. He averaged 11.3 yards a catch. Um, and so you, you, we really didn't target Brock Bowers a lot last night, but just his presence alone, being in the lineup, being on the field forces defenses to pay attention to him. He changes the game by just being on the field because it forces the defense to respect him and it creates a lot of matchup nightmares for other areas. I mean, they were pointing it out on the screen last night by just his presence of pulling safeties down because the safety knows that they have to respect him. It leaves others like Dominic Lovett, Lad McConkey, like way open. Um, just by him being there. Speaking of those two, Lad McConkey had four receptions for 81 yards. He averaged 20.3 yards a catch. That that guy is insanely good. He had himself a touchdown. Dominic Lovett also got um, didn't get on the scoreboard, but he was four for 70. He had four receptions for 77 77 yards. He averaged 19.3 yards. I mean, th these averages are crazy. 20, 19, 11. Even our running game, Kendall Milton who got himself a pair of touchdowns. Um, he's really rounded into form. And coming off that injury, I mean, he is looking dynamite. He was 9 for 127 yards, 14.1 yards averaging a run. Um, Dejon Edwards also got a couple of touchdowns. I mean, every all, look at that, 14 yards in average a run, 19.3 yards average uh, of reception, 20.3 uh, yards average, 11.3. Like, I mean... This Ole Miss defense couldn't stop Georgia in any way. I heard it all week long at it's going to be Georgia's biggest test. This is going to be Georgia's biggest test. That offense in Jackson Dart is elite, and Quinshawn Junkins is a dynamite running back. And while they are, that is very true, and how this Ole Miss defense is better than it's ever been, and they can have a chance at you know, slowing down that Georgia offense, especially with Brock Bowers not being in, or Brock Bowers is back. And no matter what Ole Miss did, they could not stop this Georgia team. This Georgia, no, I don't think anyone could have stopped this Georgia offense last night. Um, and that's how Georgia continues to play, especially on offense. That's going to be scary for everyone else in college football because this was a team that was not taking any prisoners. Um, like I said, Georgia shut down the run game for Ole Miss. They were averaging four point yards a carry. They ended up punting four times. They had nine penalties for 68 yards. That crowd was loud and electric, and they definitely Ole Miss definitely felt it. Um, here's one thing that I just found out going into, not just found out, but I didn't state this in my preview. Coming into this game, into the Georgia game, Ole Miss was ranked number two in the SEC in sacks and number three in tackles for loss. So it falls back to what I said, how I was hearing all week long that, hey, this defense is no joke. They could shut down Carson Beck. They were ranked number two in sacks and number three in tackles for loss. In this game, they had zero, not one, zero tackles for loss and zero sacks. Carson Beck was not touched. I don't even know if he was hurried all night long. Um, that O-line, when they were clicking, they, I mean, it was a beautiful thing. The, the run gaps that they got last night were phenomenal. That was a huge issue in the beginning of the season where they were creating 
space and time for Carson Beck to kind of sit back there and throw, even though Carson Beck loves to get the ball out quick, they were giving him time. But trying to get these holes opened up for our running backs to run through just didn't really seem – they couldn't really seem to, to gel to get that. Uh, they had no problem last night. Um, it was just pure I, – I can't say – enough how much they dominated this game but that offensive line I mean you got to give you got to give the ball to that offensive line I mean Carson Beck as well obviously but that offensive line was dynamite they allowed zero tackles for loss and zero sacks especially against the defense I mean rated ranked number two in sacks and number three in tackles for loss in the SEC that's a that's a good defense that's not that's not no beat around the bush like oh no that's a good defense and uh, Georgia just shut them up, plain and simple. I mean, it, it, this was kind of the type of game that I think most Georgia fans were wanting to see, waiting to see. If this game doesn't put them at number one over Ohio State, I don't know what they need to do uh, to get to number one. I, I feel like at this point, if they're not number one, Georgia could go out there and beat every team by 100, and somehow the playoff committee will still find a way to rank them not at number one. Um, I don't think it really matters. I think at that point, um, it just gives more fuel to the fire for this Georgia team. Any motivation, anything they can latch onto to use as motivation, they jump all over it. So as a Georgia fan, I'm fine. Don't put us at number uh, one. Keep us at two. Drop us at three. Put us at four. You're only going to piss the dogs off even more to fight even harder. So I'm totally fine. But I do think they deserve to be number one. Um they have faced a series of tough teams, and they are winning. Uh, Kentucky came in. They whooped Kentucky. Um, we heard all week the following up to that game, Kentucky was ranked. They are undefeated. They had a chance to do something against Georgia. Well, we saw what Georgia did against Kentucky. Uh, coming into the uh, Mizzou game, Mizzou is the second best team in the SEC East, and it's not even close. Um, you have Georgia here. Mizzou here, and then every other team way down here. Um, and even though Mizzou did put up a good fight, um, Georgia still found a way to win. They won by nine. Um, Ole Miss was supposed to be their toughest challenge of the year, and they won by 35. They whooped their ass. Uh, they mopped the floor with them. It, it literally looked like a, high, a college team playing a high school team out there. Um, so they, after all those wins – they do deserve to be number one. The eye test alone. I mean, this offense has found its groove. Carson Beck is very confident, com composed. He does not get rattled in any way. Um, that O-line is gelling. They are creating, still continuing to create time for Carson Beck. Now they're getting some healthy running backs back. They're creating holes. We've got um, Brock Bowers coming back off an injury. Um, Dejon Edward Edwards is finally starting to do really well. I mean, Lad McConkey after his injuries, he's looking down. I mean, this is a scary team. I can go on and on, list the names on this offense. But um, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. I think, um, I think that if this team plays like this, no one's going to beat them. Not Bama, not Ohio State, not Michigan, not Washington. It, I don't see. I don't see a team stopping them if they play like this for the rest of the season. Um, because, like I said in my preview, it's going to take a quarterback, a dynamic quarterback that can connect on the long balls, also use his feet to beat Georgia. You cannot just line up and beat this Georgia team. Um, and I just don't know if there's – we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Jalen Milrow, you cannot count out Alabama. I will say Jalen Milrow for Alabama is looking a lot better. He's coming into form. They're finally letting Jalen Milrow do what he's good at. Use his strengths for the team, um, and Alabama's starting to look good. But overall, like I said, I mean, I this game was an ass whooping from basically start to finish. After those two um, those two touchdowns that um, the defense gave up, it was game over. And I was very frustrated. I do want to talk about this. I was very frustrated on that first drive. Um, because Georgia is has been known to give up a touchdown or points on the first drive. Um, they've done it all year long. Uh, you might as well just go ahead, give the team seven points, and just say you don't even have to you don't even have to do the drive. We'll just give you the seven points because they score. 
Georgia had on Ole Miss um, first first um, drive. Uh, they received the ball first. Ole Miss did. Georgia defense had gotten them into a third and fourteen. So the, the, this the, they would have basically gone three and out. Um, third and fourteen, which is where Georgia's defense loves to live. On that third and fourteen play, Georgia brought zero zero pressure. They did not try and blitz the quarterback, Jackson Dart. They basically played a prevent type shell defense, and no pressure got to Jackson Dart. He wasn't hurried. He had all day to like stand back there in the pocket, and he passed it. He made a nice pass for a first down, where then that kind of gave them the momentum to come back and go down the field and score. And they converted on a fourth and two. Like, so. It was very frustrating sitting there watching that play. And I'm like, why aren't we bringing – why do we not bring pressure at them? Like, hurry the man. It's third and 14. They're on their side of the 50. I think they're still – they're at this point still at their own 30-yard line. Like, you get a stop right there on a long third and 14, they're punting the ball. They're not going to go for it on fourth down. And you have a chance to go up early. Now, all this is hindsight because Georgia won big. But – it's those little key adjustments that I wish that they would make on the first drive. It's almost like this Georgia defense is trying to fill out the other team, and then they make adjustments after the first drive or two, where if they would have just done what they do, they probably would have stopped them on that first drive, made, forced them to go through three and out. You have all the momentum. And with the way that the offense played last night, he could have gone up early. Um but they went up, and I mean, I think I think this is also funny. Here's another little funny stat that I just think is ridiculous. So here's the drive chart for um, for Ole Miss: touchdown, turnover on downs, touchdown. Then they proceeded to go punt, interception, halftime, uh, punt, 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 field goal, and they had one more where they turned over on downs. They Kicked a field goal in the fourth quarter after being down like 45 to 13. I, I don't know if it was 52 at that point, but it was, they were either down 52 to 13 or 45 to 13. Um, why? What, what was, what was the point of that? Or oh, it's 14. They were, it was, they have 14 points and two touchdowns. I thought that was silly. I thought that was dumb. I don't – I mean, maybe you're trying to get your kicker some more experience. Um, but I, I, they lined up to kick the field goal, and I'm like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Um, at least at that point, just try and go for a touchdown. If you really want to put more points on the board, you just go for a touchdown. But in the end, it truly didn't matter. Um, Georgia proved once again why they are the back-to-back um, -back national champs and why they are going for that three-peat, and they – after tonight's game, every other college football team should be worried about this offense. Carson Beck is legit. He is him. Brock Bowers is back and healthy. Lad McConkey is healthy. Receivers are starting to step up. Run game is getting going. Um, defense is fine in their groove. And it's not much football left, but also a lot of football left. So we'll see. Um, I love this game, obviously. Great ass whooping. I can't stand Lane Kiffin. Not that I can't stand him, but I just think he's more of a troll than an actual head coach. I'm glad he got to take uh, a fat ass L home with him on the lane train. Um, but other than that, Georgia won 52-17. Fuck you, Ole Miss. Over and out.